Welcome to the Power Hour with me, and Gene. Me and Gene. Do you wanna be more productive and achieve your goals? Do you wanna find your passion and live with purpose? Do you wanna make a profit and enjoy your success? Then you need to listen to the Power Hour with me, and Gene. Thank you for coming out, guys. This is the Power Hour with me, and Gene. Today, we got something special for you. We usually focus on 80% productivity tips and sprinkle a little poetry in there. But this time around, the first two episodes were really focused on productivity. This time we have 80% is going to be focusing on poetry and 20% productivity. And today's episode is The Road Not Taking, Unpacking Poetry's Power. It's a journey through Robert Frost's iconic verse and the productivity lessons within. We really want to focus on trying to learn how to break down these poems. It's going to be like a little miniature class. In today's episode, we're going to dive into the world of poetry and explore the timeless wisdom of Robert Frost's iconic poem, The Road Not Taken. Please join us as we unpack these hidden meanings behind the words, discuss how poetry can inspire creativity and self-reflection and share some productivity tips to help you make the most of your day. So get ready to be inspired and motivated. Here we go. We're going to have our AI friend read our poem today. Uh, but the poem starts with uh, some some cool words. Uh, Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both. Be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent and the undergrowth. So there's a lot of a lot of things to unpack there. Even the first two sentences is a lot to unpack. I'm going to allow you to kind of see how you learn to break down these poems. Let's let's also focus on why did I pick this poem? It's a well-known poem. It's celebrated for like 100 years. It's relatively short and it's it's easy to understand. It also explores a universal theme of choice and regret at the same time. It uses vivid imagery, lots of metaphors, you know, sprinkled in, and it's easy for you to pick them up. It also invites the readers to reflect on their own choices and in their own path. Before we break this down, I wanted to share a personal story of mine. There's times in life where you have to pick either A or you have to pick B. You know, a lot of times there's always choice A, B, or C. C is usually do nothing. But sometimes you, you come between a situation where you have to either go with A or B. My situation, you know, I, I had a friend who, who owned firearms and didn't really know what we were doing. So I, ha- I had a, a decision to make. I had to tell him, hey, you got to stop bringing those firearms with you. Now, mind you, we're, we're all 17 and 18 years old. but you know, he was one of the members of the crew. If anything goes off or anything looks crazy, he's the first one to react. But unfortunately, he got gun happy, ended up, you know, hurting himself and his girlfriend. And at that time, you know, they both passed away and we we're all 18. But for some odd reason, we were all not shocked. My decision to not hang out with him anymore, we were really cool. Like he would be in my car. And I had like an old beat up 1970s car when we were in high school. But all my friends loved it because we we got the practice. We didn't have to take the bus. So it was pretty cool. And for for some odd reason, this guy was always, he was, the term is packing. He was like always strapped, even in school, outside of school. But I had to make a decision. And it was a tough decision because he was a good friend. He was a friend of a friend of my friend and a neighbor. So, you know, back then, once you all start hanging out, it all kind of, it all kind of makes sense, you know, neighborhood kids starting hanging out and nobody messed with us. You know, all my friends were like six feet tall, you know, almost 200 pounds at that time. We all played sports. So, and we lived in Connecticut, uh, the worst cities, you know, are, are more in the inner city area. And we, in our town wasn't that much of an inner city bad area, but at the same time, you still got your knuckleheads. We still had drug dealers. We still had people in the streets. You know, we, we had those those elements. And unfortunately, I had to make a decision. And that decision 
you know, weighed heavy on me, but it was the right decision. And when I look back at it, I'm glad I made that decision. He ended up hurting himself and his family, and it was just a, a sad ordeal. But I say that to say this. You come to a road where you have to make hard decisions. And I wanted you to be aware of how crazy things can get. from Little decisions to big decisions. That's one of the reasons this poem really resonates with me. I was definitely, it was, I still remember it. It was just like one day I was just like, hey, wait a second. Either you come with us without any weapons or you don't come at, with us at all. You know what I'm saying? I made a decision to give him a decision and he, he picked his gun and he left. And I said, you know what? If you do that, man, I, I can't be cool with you no more. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. But let's try to focus on, on this poem and, and, and the other lessons that were in there. So one of the first lessons in there was, of course, being aware of decisions that have to be made and creating your own idea of A or B and not negotiating it either. But there's other, there's other powerful moments in this poem. One being time blocking for reflections. This should be time where you get to, you know, reflect on the choices uh, that you made and, and the experiences that you had. It's it's just a great way to schedule time for a productive task because you're you're allowing yourself to sit back and think about all the decisions you made in the past. Because every decision you made in the past is the reason you are where you are now. So you have to really focus on making better decisions. And looking back at your decisions, that theme is inside this poem. It's really incredible. Another reason uh, we picked this poem is we want you to focus on what's called mindful reading. There's times where, you know, after school or or after college, people don't pick up books anymore. And, And I think poetry is a great way to get back into reading because you don't have to read an entire book when it comes to poetry. You can simply pick out your favorite parts. You can pick out short poems. You know, you could you could even buy a poetry book, but you don't have to read the whole thing uh, from cover to cover because each little poem has its own little lesson. You can tell that by how great this poem was. Uh, Another thing is uh, we we inspire you to do journaling. I'm always encouraging people to write things down and and create uh, great little ideas and, and write everything down that they can that they have goals and dreams for. And that's all from journaling. It's a great way for self-expression and reflection just by jotting down your feelings and and even responses that you have to other poetry and and other poets. Poetry also is gives you like a, a creative spark. You can share, you know, how reading poems can speak up new ideas and even show uh, creativity. We really want to let you know how you can incorporate some of the readings that you're getting from these poems and create your own ideas. So if you got a good idea, write it down and shoot me a copy, you know what I'm saying? Email it to us. Uh, Before we drop uh, today's poem, we're going to let our AI, of course, uh, read it for you. Uh, We want you to uh, listen to the poem in a very, very loud way. You know, listen to the rhythm of the words and the sound. And I told the AI to read it, as if you're reading like a, a regular manual. I didn't want to give it that slow, smooth waiting for each word. I just wanted you to like read it as if it's just a friend talking to you. So you can really pick up the meaning of, of what it means. And I want you to listen to the sensory, the imagery, even uh, something as simple as yellow wood, you know, bent in the undergrowth. You know, what, what, what does all that mean? Does that mean the grass wasn't that well kept? Does that mean the trees were, were like like about to die? Does that mean it's, it's almost fall? You know, you got to really think about this and using the word yellow. Why did he choose the word yellow? We want to let you explore the theme that there's regret inside this poem. There's a there's a like a, a it represents like a turning point in, in the person's life. He was able to point out some metaphors for life's journey and the idea of choices that shape who we become. I think that's why it resonated with so many people. I want you to reflect on your own experiences and your own choices and how they have impacted your life. You know, there's a lot at the end of the poem where it says, and that has made all the difference. It's it can be broken down in so many ways. 
I want you to consider what they meant by it. So without any further ado, here we go with Robert Frost and his poem, The Road Not Taken. All right. And uh, we'll let everybody sum it up with the AI and uh, hear their great voice. And I'll see you next time. All right. On the Power Hour with me, G. Peace. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there, had worn them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step, had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere, ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The Road Not Taken. Let's break it down. The poem masquerades as a meditation about choice, but the critic William Pritchard suggests that the speaker is admitting that choosing one rather than the other was a matter of impulse, impossible to speak about any more clearly than to say that the road taken had perhaps the better claim. In many ways, the poem becomes about how, through retroactive narrative, the poet turns something as irrational as an impulse into a triumphant, intentional decision. Decisions are nobler than whims, and this reframing is comforting too for the way it suggests that a life unfolds through conscious design. However, as the poem reveals, that design arises out of constructed narratives, not dramatic actions. Having made his choice, the speaker declares, Oh, I kept the first for another day. The diction up until now has been matter of fact, focusing on straightforward descriptions and avoiding figurative language. This line initiates a change. As the speaker shifts from depiction to contemplation, the language becomes more stilted, dramatic, and old-fashioned. This tonal shift subtly illustrates the idea that the concept of choice is, itself, a kind of artifice. The fairy tale like language also accentuates the way the poem slowly launches into a conjuring trick. Frost liked to warn listeners and readers that you have to be careful of that one. It's a tricky poem, very tricky. Part of its trick is that it enacts what it has previously claimed is impossible. The traveling of two roads at once, the poem's ending refuses to convey a particular emotional meaning. It playfully evades categorizations even as it describes divisions created by choices. Its triumph is that it does travel two emotional trajectories while cohering as a single statement. We cannot tell, ultimately, whether the speaker is pleased with his choice. A sigh can be either contented or regretful. The speaker claims that his decision has made all the difference, but the word difference itself conveys no sense of whether this choice made the speaker's life better or worse. He could, perhaps, be envisioning an alternate version of life, one full of the imagined pleasures the other road would have offered. Thank you for tuning in to our podcast, The Power Hour with Mean Jean. Every week, we focus on productivity tools, what drives you, the passion within, and how to profit from your purpose. And we also look at all the poetry found all around us and see how it fits into our daily lives, a mix of productivity and poetry all in one show. We hope you enjoyed listening to this unique combination. We hope our discussions have taught you something new. Don't forget to tune in every week to discover new ways to unlock your true potential and discover new poems, too. Follow us and subscribe to our podcast to stay updated on our latest episodes. We appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more with you soon. Thanks for tuning in to the Power Hour with Mean Gene. Mean Gene. You've been inspired and motivated by Mean Gene. Mean Gene. Mean Gene. You've gained wisdom and secrets from Mean Gene.